Hi, this lesson is on place value, rounding, and expressing money. It's a fifth grade skill that comes from 5.NBT.1.4, and the name of the standard is how to uh, use place value understanding to round decimals to any place. It's important for us to understand place value and rounding, and especially with how to express money. So that's why we took the time to do this video for you, so you can get a review of things that you've had um, from previous years. What you're going to need is your composition notebook opened to your next available page, along with a sharpened pencil and being ready to go. So we're going to begin with reviewing decimal place value. Now for um, this class, the highest decimal place value that you really need is to go to the ten thousands. And so that's four spots that come after the decimal point. But looking at this, I want you to start with always finding the decimal point. So the decimal point on this one here, and I'm going to circle it in red, is over right over in this area here. So anytime that you read a decimal within a number, you don't, you're not really supposed to say Point. For example, the number on this one, some people would say 15.4759. And really, that's not the correct way to say that. So you really want to say the word and. Now, I think we're pretty confident with how to read numbers at the beginning of a decimal point. For instance, if I were to write down this number here, I think you guys would all be able to tell me this number written here is 715. So if I were to change this number now and add a decimal point to it, The way that you would read this number, it would be 721, so you read the, the entire number up until the decimal point, then you use the word and when you see the decimal, then you're going to name that number or st state the number and then give it that name, which would be the tenth spot. So the way that you would read this problem would be 721 and five, and since it's one spot after the decimal point, it is in your tenths column, so it would be read as 721 and five tenths. Looking at the next example here, the way that you would read this number would be 16 and, so we're going to read this entire number, 278, then give it that name, thousandths. So this number is 16 and 278 thousandths. What's important for you to realize is one spot after your decimal point is your tenths column, so that's where the four is in this problem here. Two spots after your decimal point is your hundredths column, three spots after your decimal point is your thousandths, and then four spots is your ten thousandths. Now it does keep going forever and ever and ever, it'll never end, but these are the main ones that we really want to make sure that we're comfortable with being able to read and moving on into the rounding part. So now we're going to move into the rounding part. Now remember, don't write anything down until you see that little um, pencil logo, but right now I just want you to pay attention. Now you've probably learned different types of rounding rhymes or little rhythms that you go along or sayings to help you remember what to do when, when you round. One of the more popular ones is the one that I have written here where it states, five or more, raise a score four or less, let it rest. I've also heard some that say five or more, raise a score, four or less, leave the mess, where you would basically leave everything alone and then just kind of move on to your next number. So doing some research on this, I came across one that I thought was interesting and I've never heard it before, but I thought that maybe it could help for some of you that are still struggling with how to um, round to the proper decimal place. All right, so the saying goes like this. It says, who's that knocking on my back door? Five or more, raise, that, raise the score. So you can kind of say with a little rhythm like, who's that knocking on my back door? Five or more, raise the score. So I'm not very good at rhyming, but you can get the idea. So let me show you how we could use this one to, um, to work for us. So we're going to start with rounding to the nearest whole number. 
So it's important to make sure that we can identify where the whole number spot is. In this number, 43 and 4 tenths, our whole number would be the 43. It's the number that's written in front of or before the decimal point. So when I want to round it to the nearest whole number, I basically want to take everything that comes after that decimal, which is what I just put in this box, and I want it to go away, but I can't just ignore what's there. So this is where the little saying could go. All right, where it says, um, who's that knocking on my back door? Five or more, raise the score. Okay, so if I'm rounding this to the nearest whole number, what we could do is we can sit there and basically draw a door um, right where our uh, whole number is. Okay, or right over in this area here like this. So I'm putting a um, line right after where I want to round it to. So what I'm trying to say here is that I want to round this to the nearest whole number. That's where the 3 is. So this number is either going to stay a 43 or it's going to go up to a 44. Okay, it'll never go down to a 42, ever. So by making my green line here, that's where my door is. So if someone's knocking on my back door, well, this is the guy that's knocking on the back door. It's the 4 right here. So if it's five or more, we're going to raise the score, which means we're going to make the 43 one more higher. We're raising the number to a 44. But see, the thing is, though, this four is not five or more. It's four. It's less than five. So we're basically going to leave it alone and let it rest. So in this example here, 43 and four tenths would simply get rounded to the whole number 43. So let's try this example here. On this one, we have the number 291 and 67 hundredths. What I want to do is I want to round it to the nearest tenth. So what you have to do first is locate your number that's in the tenth column. That's one spot after the decimal point. So the number that's in the tenth spot or in the tenth column would be the six. So that means I need to look at the number to its right. I have to look at that seven. So this is where my line's going to go right over here between the 6 and the 7. Okay, so that's where I'm drawing my door. So I'm going to sit there and see who's knocking on my back door. It's the 7. Since it's 5 or more, that means I need to take the 6 that's in my tens column and raise it up one more spot. So instead of a 6, it's going to become a 7. So I'm going to go ahead and write my 291, my decimal point, and my 7. So now I've just rounded 291 and 67 hundredths to the nearest tenth, which would be written as 291 and 7 tenths. So you would just basically drop off anything that comes after the tenth spot, since that's exactly where we want to have it. Now taking the same number right here, I just want to make sure you guys know what to do with it if ever you see something like this. I'm going to take the same number here, 291 and 67 hundredths, except I'm going to add another digit to it. So let's say I add a 3 to it. So the way that you would read this number is 291 and 673 thousandths. So the thing is, though, I want the rule to still be the same. I want to be able to round it to the nearest tenth, which is one spot after the decimal point. Well, that means any number that comes after the tenth spot has to go bye-bye. It can't stay there. So there's where I drew my line, which is also my back door. And I want to be able to round it to this decimal spot right here. That's my tenth. Now, just because we have a 73, it doesn't matter that the three's here. He doesn't matter at all. We're still going to pay attention to that number that's right by that back door. It's a seven. So since it's five or more, we're still going to raise a score. So this answer, even though it was six, um, 291 and 673 thousandths, it's still going to get rounded to two nine. 291 and 7 tenths when you're rounding it to the nearest tenth. So now it's your turn to write this down. Go ahead and title your paper Place Value, Rounding, and Expressing Money. So I would like for you to write down the number 123 and 4,567 ten thousandths. So I want you to write it as you see it here, along with underneath the 4, the 5, the 6, and the 7, I want you to write the place value of the decimal points there.
Once you've done that, I also want you to write what I have written here, examples, and then underline the word examples, and write rounding to the nearest hundredth. I would like for you to write the two examples that I have written here on the paper and I want you to pause the video once you've written them down and I really want you to try to round these to the nearest hundredth spot. Now use the model that you just wrote on your paper or you could rewind the screen or the video to the earlier screen where it showed the table on the place value chart if that helps you better. Okay, so pause now. All right, so to round to the nearest hundredth, we need to locate our hundredth spot. That is the second digit that comes um, after each of our numbers. So that's the six in the first number there, which means I have to look to the number to its right. Now, if I'm going to draw that door there, okay, that's where my number is going to end is after the hundredth spot. I need to drop off that two. So I'm going to ask myself, well, is it a five or more knocking on my door? No, it's not, which means that I could just knock out that two. So this answer ends up being four and 56 hundredths, and that's it. If you look at the second example, okay, locate your hundred spot, that's where the one is. So I'm gonna draw my door right after it. So knocking on my door is the seven, that's five or more, which means I need to raise the score. So this one becomes two and 60 two hundredths. All right, so the last part of this lesson is going to be on expressing money. So go ahead and put this on your papers, wherever you have room. I ran out of room on mine, so I had to go to my next page, but you guys should have still a little bit of room left on your papers. If not, then just go to your next page. So when we're expression, expressing money, it's very important that we understand where to place the decimal point and where to place the dollar sign. So we're going to start with the dollar sign. You guys, no matter what, the dollar sign goes in front of a dollar amount. It doesn't go after it. It goes in front of it, just like I have shown here. So in this example, the, the amount shown is $25.97. Now there's going to be times when you're going to cal be calculating dollar amounts and figuring out what sales taxes and things like that. And when you're done multiplying something, you might end up with an answer that could look like this. Let's say you have $241 and, and then you get three numbers that come after it like that. Well, you have to think about this. Money. Money only goes to the hundredth spot. That's two numbers after the decimal point. So when you're calculating and dealing with money, you have to remember, okay, I'm dealing with money. It cannot be beyond the hundredth spot, which is where the two is right over here. So that means there's my door. You would follow typical, normal, like rounding rules. Okay. No matter what, even if they don't tell you to round with money, you have to, we don't go around writing 200 $141 and 327 cents. That's not how it works. Okay. So you would, um, just pay attention to that seven knocking on this door. Since it's five or more, we would raise the score, which means this two over here would go up to the next digit, which would be a three. So this dollar amount would end up turning into $241 and 33 cents. Okay, so I want you to go ahead and write this down on your paper. And the last thing I want you to just write down as a little reminder is that money gets rounded to the nearest hundredth, which is two spots after the decimal point. All right, so take a moment to um, copy the last of these two sentences. Pause your video. And then when you're done, we are done for the day. All right, guys, that's it for now, and we'll see you back in class.